Welcome back to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel. And what we're doing today is a little trip into the Hold and Modify Amiga store. So we have various software uh, floating around the, uh, the office here, right? You know, you've probably seen it in various videos, just kind of hanging out, right? But I was going to, well, I wanted to try something different today. I actually wanted to do something retro, do something like what we all did way back in the day, which is to actually purchase some software and then, you know, install it. I know you're probably thinking, well, Q, that's, uh, that's, that's boring. I'm not going to watch this video. I'm not going to watch you install software. Well, you know what? You are not going to watch me install software, but somebody else might want to watch it because you know what? Gosh, it's just kind of cool. So let's let's uh let's pick something. I'm thinking DigiPaint 3. Cause I didn't really use it that much because I was I'm not really a good 2D artist. But uh that was a fun piece of software. So let's uh let's go ahead and put that in there. The computer will rule the world. And what computer are we going to install this into? Well, you know, something that's, uh, I mean, uh, something, something fun. The Amiga 2500, this was a workhorse of the, yes, I know this is an Amiga 3000 keyboard, not a 2000 keyboard. If any of you out there have an Amiga 2000 keyboard and you want to send it to me, I mean, I would totally, you know, dig it and appreciate it and, you know, I could put this in the closet, I guess. Anyway, uh, the 2500 desk over here. Hello, Pymiga. I love you so much. You're pretty awesome, too. But yeah, let's go ahead and get DigiPaint 3 installed into the 2500. The 2500 in the Amiga 2000 series was a robust, awesome workhorse of the videographer generation in the uh, 80s and 90s. I mean, this was it. This was the machine that hosted, of course, the original toaster. Uh, which we, you know, have uh, sitting over there. Well, that's the Toaster 4000, the next generation. But uh, yes, you know what I mean. That's uh, this was the this was the workhorse. This was the machine that, arguably, in uh, you know, in America at least, put the Amiga brand on the uh, the mind of everybody who was into video production and uh, various things related to that. So let's yeah, like I said, let's uh, let's get DigiPaint 3 going. All right, so this box is complete. It does have the original discs that it came with, the manual and the DigiPaint 3 software and the Transfer 24 software. But whoever sold this to me also did include a copy of the disc. And I don't know uh, what this is. I don't know if this means it's been um, de-copy protected or, or what. So uh, let's go ahead and fire it up and uh, see what happens. So it says, well, it says it just simply says copy of paint a paint bench copy of paint bench okay well sure so this looks like it doesn't even really need a uh i guess an installer maybe i don't know you know what why don't i go ahead and just grab the original disc over here and put it in and see if it's the same as this okay so we've got the original by the way as always the most underproduced, poorly produced Amiga channel. I'm sorry for the shadows and things. I don't have the fancy, expensive lights that people have. But anyway, here's the original uh, D Paint disc. Let's uh, Digi Paint disc. Sorry, not D Paint. Don't confuse those two. Put that in there, and let's see if it pops up with the same type of. Yeah, it's it just says Paint Bench, and it's there's no installer. So yeah, this is one of those things that you can just drag the contents to your. Uh, Amiga and just run it. You don't need to install it. So let's go ahead and just well, you know what? There's a demo. You want to, want to do the demo? Let's do the demo. I have speakers, by the way. They're down there. So all right, let's do the demo. Let's see what it does. I'm sure this will be thrilling. Oh, oh, oh no. It can't find a bunch of stuff. It can't open run for input object not found. 
Um, 1989 DigiPaint NTSC version 3.0. So yeah, this is basically booting a 1.3 operating system with uh, Amiga 3.2 ROMs. So there you go. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, the, the blue and the orange. Now, I was one of the guys that when as soon as I installed Amiga 1.3, I would neutralize the colors and I would make them grays and blues and things like that just to because this is like this is the clown colors just blue kind of just it freaked me out. All right, so let's see if I can run this uh, this this demo now that we've actually um, booted off the disk, sort of. I guess I don't know. Well, um, it says press left Amiga N to get to workbench. Then double click the quit demo icon. Uh, it never launched. Well, hey, it failed. Okay, well, let's just launch the paint program then. How about that? Well, look at that. It fired up. And yeah, we've got the, uh, the DigiPaint 3. I remember this, sort of. So we've got the, uh, let's pick color red, get the ball tool. And yes, of course, you get the ball fill tool. Ooh, that's fun. Controls. So this was the thing that kind of like freaked people out a little bit because you like it looks like 3D the things are happening. Like this looks like, you know, I want to get the camera close here for folks. And I'll try and zoom in using the uh, my editor software. I'll, I'll crop in because if I try to push the camera closer, we're going to get that moray pattern. It's really annoying. Well, maybe not. I can get away with it here. Eh, it's getting a little janky. So I'll zoom in and edit. But uh, yeah, so this, this, this looks like, like 3D stuff, right? Like, and like this is flashing. So what's going on right here is obviously there's some uh, OS ROM 3.2 shenanigans happening because you're supposed to see a really cool looking like 3D rendered ball here, kind of like these little ones here, but a big one and it's not showing up. It's like, you can kind of see it flashing there yeah okay and then of course the awesome oh well the palette works so this is cool this is like a like the amiga ham palette which was something that was really neat that digipaint 3 did it kind of exposed all of the the amazing colors that the uh the, the chipset could do and uh i don't know how it did this is this is this that that classic kind of copper trick or whatever to get all these colors to show up like this i always thought i would you know this is the era we were in. I would just sit here on the palette screen and just click this stuff and be amazed at all the beautiful colors it could do. Like I didn't even create anything. I just clicked the, the colors. That's that's what I did. Oh, look at that. And we go back to our controls and we like move the little hot box over here. Okay. So now when we draw the little ball, watch that. Oh, look at that. Little hot boxes over there. Now like the highlight of the sphere the, the, the gradation of these colors lines up where this little hot box is. So how did I do that? Because I was trying to show you this earlier, right? So we're, see this little button down in the corner that says range? Uh, by default, I was clicking it with the left button and that was just doing that. But if you right click it, oh, look at that. Mode, so the default is normal and that gets you this, right? Yeah, if you have fill turned on, it just gets you that. But if you right click it and you go to mode and you say range, then you get the gradation option because they're calling so their name for gradient like a gradient of a range of colors here they call it range which you know, i guess that makes sense and yeah there's other modes in here you can blur so if you come up here and do this it's gonna blur or soften everything you just keep doing it over and over it's it's progressively getting blurry it's probably not showing on camera but it is getting more and more progressively blurry kind of like you would do in photoshop so it has some cool basic uh you know photoshoppy type modes and options and yeah it does have effects like flip horizontal vertical rotate the palette so it's a very simple paint program it doesn't have a lot oh look at that genlock Ooh. uh this is the same paint program they included with the video toaster eventually so it doesn't have a lot of options but uh it is a lot of fun because it is a full ham paint package and it's fairly simple um i mean you saw me fumbling around with it, but it doesn't have a lot of options to explore. So not really, I don't know, I would say like complicated. You just got to spend more than five minutes with it like I did. So there you go. Spend six minutes with it and uh, you'll know how to use it. 
and uh, be a true 2D paint master, I guess. All right, so yeah, I guess I'm really now am done with this video. Yeah, I am done with this video.